Hey, yeah. Uh, okay, so Pierre Dorian, Ottawa Senator's GM and current guy in charge, had himself an interview he did on TSN 1200 the other day that had a whole bunch of quotes that had Sens fans talking. Now, there are so many things when it comes to the Sens that you could highlight from this interview, talking about, oh, if we sell out all 41 games, we're going to spend the cap, stuff like that. You know, it's kind of crazy stuff that if you take out of context makes it sound a lot worse than it really is when you listen to the full things. But amongst this talk of the Senators and their direction and their future and their plans was a discussion on one of the top prospects they do have in their system. This is a guy that we've talked about a few times on the channel already, and he's a guy that we've been sort of anticipating the debut of in the Senator system full-time. We're talking today about the fifth overall pick at the 2020 NHL entry draft, the second Senators pick that they had in that selection, and their own pick, I believe, since Tim Stutzla, third overall, was the Sharks pick, something like that. But either way, Sanderson was the second in a series of two top-round selections by the Sens, and he's been showing off very well at the North Dakota level, just what makes him so special as a prospect and a pick. However, the reason we're making this video is because of that Pierre Dorian interview, and what exactly it was that Dorian had to say when it comes to probably the best defensive prospect the Senators have in their system right now, and whether or not those comments that he made are even all too fair to say. So, Jake Sanderson, as we said, fifth overall 2020, he's a pretty big guy, 6'2", 190 pounds, is a left-handed defenseman, 19 years old, July 8th, 2002 is the birth date, and when the Senators drafted him, he was playing out of the US NTGP. This was a team that was really trying to recover from departing from the star-studded talent they had in 2019. Turcott, Hughes, Zegras, Caulfield, York, Boldy, Knight, all these great, fantastic names were on the team in 2019, but the next season, Jake Sanderson was pretty much the best player on that squad. He had 29 points in 47 games played as a smooth, skating, puck-moving defenseman who had a really good offensive edge to his game while also being stable two-way as well. He was arguably one of the best skaters of the draft, and it was a really nice combination of size, fluidity, and agility that Sanderson had to his game, which is why he went fifth overall in the first place. Plus the fact that his all-round game was good enough that a lot of people went out there and said, yeah, this guy could be a top two defenseman if everything works out for him well, and should he develop properly in whichever system drafts him. Ottawa became that system, and Sanderson went to the NCAA the next year, putting up 15 points in 22 games played for the North Dakota Fighting Sioux. Not a fantastic record, but certainly a good enough transition for a guy that had all the skills and the tangible assets that Sanderson had. Next season, though, he went over to North Dakota once again and had himself 26 points in 23 games played. Of course, the North Dakota Fighting Hawks have themselves a whole bunch of Senators prospects, from Shane Pinto in the past to Tyler Clevin to Jacob Bernard Docker. There were a few Ottawa Senators guys on this team, and... This season, of course, you see the improvements that he had over a point per game, etc., etc. He played as the captain for Team USA at the World Juniors, where he had zero points, but of course the tournament kind of shut down, so it's not really the most definite sample size he has had. But then he also played one game for Team USA at the Olympics, getting an assist in the process. Now, Sanderson is a good player, and I think a lot of people will acknowledge that he is one of the better defensive prospects in the NHL right now, well, technically not in the NHL, but whose rights are held by an NHL team because of his projectability, because of his physical maturity, because of his mobility, and because of his offensive-defensive two-way potential. But when it comes to what Pierre Dorian said about Sanderson, I kind of want to hold the horses a little bit. We want to be careful with our expectations about Jake Sanderson, he said yesterday on the radio. But we drafted Eric Carlson and Thomas Shabbat, and Sanderson is in that category. Now, I, I Jesus, okay, um, a lot of Senators fans are kind of saying the same thing about this. I don't really see anybody going out there saying, yeah, he's going to be that good, he's going to be fantastic, he's going to be Eric Carlson too, or that he's going to be Thomas Shabbat too, like, Ottawa fans, for the most part that I've seen, have been pretty rational about this guy and his development, and especially this take 
I've seen Sens fans in the comment section of my old videos talking about Sanderson and the prospects and everything, and you all seem to have a pretty rational level of optimism for him and his services, but... To hear Pierre Dorian say this, it kind of makes me throw all that out the window. We want to be careful with our expectations about this guy, meaning that we don't want to have too high of a pedestal to put this player on. But he's the same as Eric Carlson, Thomas Chabot. Wow, Pierre Dorian. What a comment. We don't want to put too high of an expectation on this guy, but just saying he's as good as Carlson. Like, I don't know about you. But even for me, I wouldn't say that Carlson and Shabbat were in the same tier, you know? Like, Shabbat is really good. I've been a very big believer in Thomas Shabbat ever since he made his debut with the Ottawa Senators after graduating from the St. John Sea Dog system. And the amount of production that he has had in the past kind of indicates where he could go in his career at 55 points in 70 games in 2018-19 when he was only, what is that, 20 two years old. Now, this previous season, he had 38 points in 59 games, which is a great pace. Do the math over 82 games, and he was on pace for 52 points. You see the amount of minutes the guy logs. He plays like 30 minutes a night. It's wild. He just does everything himself because he's that good. It's just Ottawa isn't that great of a team, so you have players who play all the time, like Shabbat, who suffer because of it. However, Eric Carlson, to me, was the best defenseman in the entire league by a significant margin when he was in his prime. How many defensemen go out there and score 82 points in a season? Like, I know Victor Hedman just kind of did that, but like, in an era where scoring was not as prevalent as it is today, and by era, I mean like five years ago, you still had Eric Carlson being a point-per-game player, getting 82 points in 82 games, getting 71 points in 77 games, leading this team to a Stanley Cup almost finals appearance. Thank you, Chris Kunitz, for damning the entire Ottawa Senators system for the next few years. But Eric Carlson was one of the best gosh darn players in the world, and... I think it's kind of unfair to him to say that Thomas Shabbat is even in the same category of Carlson, let alone a Jake Sanderson who's 20 freaking years old. Or, excuse me, 19, he's turning 20 in July. But does it not creep anybody else out that Pierre Dorian's saying it like this? Yeah, no, Sanderson's coming in here. We don't want to make him feel too pressured. We don't want to put too high of an expectation on him. But by the way, he's in the same territory as Eric Carlson. Like, man, Carlson today, maybe, but like, oh boy, Carlson in his prime was... Phenomenal. So I think even just mentioning any defenseman prospect in the same breath as what Eric Carlson had been for the Senators is a little bit pressuring, if I do say so myself. So Pierre Dorian, thank you for going out there and doing what it was that you said you wouldn't want to do because you had to go out there and make that hyperbolic comparison. So let me know in the comments all your thoughts. What do you think about Jake Sanderson heading over to the NHL and the Senators for next season? For me personally, I don't really think he's going to be that good. Like, of course, comparatively speaking to Shabbat right away and Eric Carlson, I do think he does have that ceiling to be somewhat of a Thomas Shabbat type of player, but I don't see Sanderson ever getting 82 points in an 82-game season. Like, I know anything is possible when you're talking about young, rebuilding teams that have youthful players, but like, still, does anybody aside from Pierre Dorian really think that Jake Sanderson is going to be as good as Eric Carlson? I mean, if you do, then please let me know in the comments. I'd be very interested in seeing what makes you say that, but I have been kind of watching Sanderson for the past little bit here. The past few years have seen his very good skating ability and his puck carrying ability and his offensive skills, and I guess that those are some of the same attributes that I would say to describe Eric Carlson in his prime, but Eric Carlson had something that a lot of people, a lot of players didn't have, and it's tough to describe what that was in any other word aside from X Factor. He just had that ability to come alive when he needed to, and he took over shifts, he took over games, and he would set guys up with crazy cross-crease passes after skating, walking the line, drawing everybody to him. He would make flip passes to Mike Hoffman that resulted in really nice breakaways. Like, Eric Carlson was just... He, he transcended the defenseman label. He was so offensively gifted that, you know, it's not the same as a Victor Hedman now. Hedman got 80-something points in 82 games, which is good. I definitely don't want to discredit what Hedman did this season, but, like, if you're asking me for Prime Hedman or Prime Carlson, I'm going Prime Carlson because that guy was a maniac. So let me know in the comments all your thoughts about the Ottawa Senators, where they're going next season with Jake Sanderson and what the comparable situation really is. Like, if he actually is the next coming of Carlson or Shabbat, if you really do think so, let me know in the comments why that is and what your opinions are of me critiquing that entire idea. But either way, I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.